ladies and gentlemen, how are we doing? And welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name's Chris. I'm going to be your host for today. And you're looking at an amazing lineup here. This is our 2021 Whiskey of the Year. Now we have a couple of rules here. Basically, I went with only whiskeys that I have in my collection. Obviously, if I haven't tried it or if I don't collect it or if I don't have it, I can't review it. If I can't review it, then I can't tell you it's the Whiskey of the Year. So this is what I have. I took out a couple of bourbons. I have a 202103 Booker's. I have a Larceny A121, and I have an Elijah Craig A121 as well. I took those out for the reason that, one, I don't want to do Elijah Craig because I already know it's not going to win. Two, I can't do 10 bourbons in one night. That would just be way too much. And three, the Larceny, Bookers, and Elijah Craig all have multiple releases throughout the year where I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, all of the ones that I have here are one release for 2021. So we have, starting from my left to your right, I think, my left to your left, I guess, a Midwinter's Night Dram, Act 9, Scene 5. Then we have Sam Houston, 15. We have the Remus 5. We have the Makers FAE 02 line. We have the Jack Daniels Koi Hill, which we just did a review of. Pack 7 is actually not mine, so I'm cheating a little bit. This is coming from my brother-in-law. He collects bourbon as well, which makes it very nice because I don't have to buy all of them. And then we have the Old Fitzgerald Spring 2021 Eight Year Bottled and Bond. Now, these are all blind. I don't know what they are. The answers are in here. It's written in uh, permanent markers, so I didn't want to have it showing, so I couldn't see through it. We have stickers on the bottom of the glasses, which are going to correlate with stickers on the paper. Afterwards, we're going to get rid of all the ones that we don't like one at a time. By the way, shout out my sponsor, Gatorade. Gatorade is now sponsoring these video. I'm just kidding. They're not at all. But I got this cool Gatorade water bottle, and we're going to need to hydrate for something like this. But everybody knows before we do get started, we'll start over here on my right. Everybody knows time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. Not bad. So here we go. We're going to get right into this because I don't want this to be a long video. We've got seven bourbon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just wanted to make sure we've got seven bourbons we've got to get through. I'm going to try and eliminate them as quickly as possible. I like to keep videos between 10 and 12 minutes, but this one with everything we've got to get through might be a little bit longer. So make sure you click that like, make sure you click that subscribe button here at the beginning in case you don't make it all the way to the end. But we started with number one over here. This is our plain glass. We've got a Penelope, ga P Penelope glass. We've got two bourbon of the week glasses and then three more plain glasses here at the end. Again, Again, there's stickers on the bottom correlating with the stickers on the answer key. We're just going to get down to the very last one that we like the best and see what it is. This one, though, very light. Makes me believe. And now, again, the only one I haven't had in this collection personally is the Pac-7. I probably should have tried it before we did this. But this is very light. Pac-7 Blood Oath coming in at 98.6 proof. So it could be the Pac-7. Doesn't really taste too much like the old fits. Now, before I started this, I thought it was going to either be the Remus or were the old fits. Those were two of my favorites of the year. But again, doing this blind is going to really keep us honest on what we think. We're going to keep it laid back. We're not going to get too much into the actual everything that's going on on these bottles. If you want to see any of that, check out the reviews on the channel. But this one, it's light. It's easy sipping. It's not terrible, but not a lot of flavor going on here. Not over impactful. I let these sit out for a little while because we do have stuff like Jack Daniels Koi Hill up here coming in at 142.8 proof. So I wanted to let them open up evenly for all of them. Marissa poured them up for us. She did a perfect job. I didn't want to drink 16 glasses of bourbon tonight, or did I? Well, only you'll never know. Again, that's very light, very easy drinking. Kind of has a little bit of a, a craft note, that young note to it. And I don't really exactly know the ages on all of these. I'm sure I do if I sat down and thought about it, but we're going to leave that there. Young, light, easy drinking with a little bit of a weird tang to it at the end. Nothing crazy there. Not my favorite, not my least favorite. I'm going to try and remember this. I should probably write it down, but we'll just go over it and I'll revisit if I have to. Number two, which is our coffee glass sticker. Coffee glass sticker. That makes sense. Another lighter one. Now, I don't know which. That one almost tastes like the Midwinters, if I had to guess. Only because it is finished. Now, Blood Oath is finished too. If I, Is that correct? Blood Oath is finished in, not going to try and pronounce that, and it's written in cursive. It's, it's, it's finished in some other type of barrel. I believe those are the only two finished bourbons that we have. Remus is High Rise, Sam Houston we already talked about on our channel. FAE02, I actually tried. I didn't review this one yet, but I did try that one previous to doing this. Not tonight, just to see what it was like. This one, though, again, not my favorite flavor. Almost some oakiness to that. That actually might be FAE02, because I remember the FAE02 having a lot of oakiness. Also might be the Sam Houston 15, because obviously 15 years behind it might give it a little bit of oakiness as well. So these two to start start off, I'm not loving them. They're not bad. 
I think all of these bourbons have a spot here on the list, but not my favorite to start off the bourbons of the week, bourbons of the week, bourbons of the week, whiskeys of the year. Now the crazy part is I don't usually drink water with my bourbons just because I like to fully experience them. But after you drink one and then you drink water, you really start to pull out some flavors in the back of the palate there. A lot of oak on that, which makes me lean back towards that Sam Houston 15. Let's get right into number three here. A little bit darker here. Almost a, no, it's not quite the red that I remember the Jack Daniels Coy Hill being. But this is the birthday cake. Bourbon of the week glass. Let's see what we get here. Ooh, already a little bit much more in depth on the flavor profile just off the smell here that's kind of crazy this might be let's see let's just take a sip i'm not going to assume anything very dry on that one that one is very dry very good flavor profile again a lot of oak a lot of oak on that one as well and i don't remember all of these having crazy oak on them except for these two so makers and Sam Houston, maybe? Should I, like, kind of... Nah, I won't line them up as they go. But I'm thinking Makers and Sam Houston right here. I'm thinking Midwinners and Pack Pac 7 right here. Not sure which one's which, but that's just what I'm getting off the rip here. Just because, one, none of these sip too hot. So, Sam Houston's only 103. Makers comes in at 109. The Pack 7 we already talked about. And then Midwinners comes in at 98.6. Perfect temperature for drinking, you know? So that almost makes me believe that that's what we're working with on these four. Now, I don't get a lot of heavy rye on this, and I don't get very much MGP yet on these four right here. But I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. If you haven't checked out my Christmas advent calendar, then you're missing out because you've seen how wrong that I could be. Let's get into number four, five here. We're already on the number five. We're crushing it. This is the television. This television right here. Oh, that smells delicious. You get the sweetness finally off one of these. This smells almost like it's going to be old fits or... The Remus, which is going to be tough to one. Remus is high rye, but it definitely has some sweetness. And, and Old Fitz is weeded with that 20% wheat, but it still has some rye spice to it, even though there's no rye in it. So it doesn't have rye spice, but it has a little kick to it. You know, a little cinnamon, a little spice. Let's try it out. Let's see what we think. That one's good. That one might be my favorite one so far, but I'm not sure what it is. It, it's again, it's very light. It's a very light flavor. I'm not sure why I, one of these has to be jack daniels there's no way i already that's jack daniels i'm almost i'm almost positive that i'm gonna skip sorry we're going out of order here this one says today this is the today sticker Ooh, i don't know now i'm very confused i didn't love the jack daniels goy hill i thought it drank way too hot i only had it open for two days so now we're pushing almost a week and a half since it's been open almost two weeks so it might have opened up a little bit more in that amount of time. Plus, I let it sit out here for a pretty good amount of time. So that might have helped me compared to when I did it on the review where I only let it sit for a few minutes. There's the heat. There's the dryness. There's the, the oak. A little weird flavor on that one too, but I remember getting something a little funky on the Jack Daniels. This one I think is Jack Daniels. Not my favorite. So far, this one's my favorite. The television's my favorite. And that one... Definitely some heat to it. That one's that one's different though. I don't know if that's the Jack Daniels. I'm just going kind of off the color on that one because this one almost has a similar complexity when it comes to the color. Let's get into our last one, which is actually our sixth one. And this says to do on the bottom. Let's get right into the, ooh, what is that? That smells fantastic. So I was thinking old, I was thinking Remus or old fits for this one. And I'm thinking Remus or old fits for this one as well. Let's see, let's try it. I don't get a lot of spice with that. I'm going to say that that's the old Fitz, which makes me believe this one's the Remus. These two are up between the Pact and the Midwinter's Night Dram. These two are up between the Sam Houston and the um, Maker's Mark. And that's what I think. That's off the rip here. Now, which one did we like the best? And that's the toughest part. When you drink this many bourbons, it's tough to, you start to pick up flavors in between each. You add the water to the palate. It changes the complexity of all of these. Let's go back through one more quick time. We'll start to eliminate some as we go here. These two are where I'm leaning to start eliminating some. Now, I should, I'll put them in an order, I guess. I'll put them in least to favorite, and we'll see what ended up where. But these two are definitely going to be one of our least favorites. Let's see which one we like the least. I didn't hate that one this time. This is so tough. I did not hate that one this time. Still oaky, dry. Pretty good sweetness with that one. Am I messing this up? Who knows? Only one way to find out, I guess. This one's my least favorite. We're going to go least favorite here, which means this one earned its way to the next spot. 
So let's see if I like this one more or less than this one here. The water changes things so much that it's crazy. Again, I don't normally drink water. I'll normally have water, but I'll try not to drink it as much because I didn't know that it really affected the palate this much. But let's see. Do we like this one more or less than this one here? We like that one more. Do we like this one more or less than this one here? We like that one less. Oh, we're moving here. Now do we like this one more or less than this one? If we like it less, now do we like this one less than this? Do we have to go back again? I don't think so. I think I like this one more than this one. Next one, if we have to, we'll drop it down too. Oh, this one smells good. I forget where we're at. I think these two were into the we're into the old fits and the Remus that I thought. I like that one. This is the one that I thought was the Jack Daniels. So we might have to drop that back back through these. Oh, this one has a funky smell on it. This has something weird going on on it that I thought I loved originally, but I don't know if I love it now. This one, I'm going to drop a couple, I think, sadly, because I thought that was the Remus of the old fits. That's where I'm going to put that one. All of these are drinking very light, though, except for this last one. Oh, I guess all of them are pretty. I mean, none of them are crazy super high, except for the Jack Daniels Koi Hill. And you can almost kind of tell. I don't know if you can off the... This one, this one or this one is Jack Daniels Koi Hill because these are very similar when it comes to color. Um, and I didn't get the craziest amount of heat off that and I do definitely get some heat. Not even that crazy actually anymore. Maybe I messed up on Jack Daniels Koi Hill. Let's see though. If this is, this might not even be Jack Daniels. I've been, again, wrong before. That's gotta be Jack Daniels Koi Hill. Woo! By the way, Bourbon of the Week hoodies, make sure you check us out on Instagram. You can win one of these if you just guess the score that I'm going to give one of these bourbons on one of my regulars. By the way, it won't come with a spit up. I know what you're all thinking. Why is, why is your hoodie all... It's been one of those days, okay? Baby had a little spit up today. That's what happens. A lot of you have been asking about the baby girl. She's doing amazing. I don't like to put her on the social media that much just because a lot of you guys are strangers and I don't know what you're into. So we keep her off the social media as far as this account. Obviously, we put her on the personal social medias and stuff, but she's doing well. Everybody's happy, healthy. Wife's got to go wet back to work soon, so she's definitely not happy about that. But after what? Three months off? Nobody would be. So here we go. Let's see. I think this is the Jack Daniels Koi Hill, but I'm not hating this as much as I did the first time that I drank it. It's definitely still giving me that heat, but I'm starting to appreciate the flavors a little bit more because the vapor is kind of, you know, I guess you just got to let it sit for more than four minutes. Let it open up for more than two days. Here we go. One more time. I'm definitely going to drop it a little bit, but I don't know if I'm going to take it all the way to the bottom. Above this and above this. Now we're in here somewhere. I'm going to put it here for now. And I'm going to try this one again to see if I like it more or less. Again, I'm trying to be quick about this. I don't want to keep you guys here all day. The editing always helps. This, this smell, I don't know. This has to be finished. This one has to be. I know we thought that one of these was pack seven or a midwinter's night dram. This has to be finished. I have to, I have to assume that this is finished just by the smell that I'm getting off of this. I like this one better than this one, but I don't know if I love that one anymore. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, that made a big jump. Big jump right here for this guy. For good old nail polish, whatever that one is, made a big jump. And that's where we're gonna put it. So let's figure it out. Let's just reveal it. Let's get right into it. We don't keep you waiting anymore. Also, Bourbon of the Week koozies. You can win one of those as well. Instagram, check us out. Click that like button, click that subscribe button. We're trying to get to 2,000 here. Let's see, we're gonna start with least favorite. I'm so scared. The coffee mug coming in. Guys, one of my, what I thought was my favorite of this is my least favorite. The Old Fitzgerald, eight year, bottled in bond, 100 proof is my least favorite out of this lineup. That's absolutely stunning to me. This is why you do things blind, all right? You get things in your head, you look for them, you hunt for them, you get real lucky, you find them online at 3.30 in the morning, and all of a sudden they're your favorite bourbon. Do blinds. Do blind taste testing. Old Fitzgerald, spring 2021, bottled and bond, eight year is my least favorite. Now we got a great lineup here, so I'm not I'm not too mad about it. Number two, though, or number six is the selfie. The selfie was Blood Oath. Blood Oath Pack 7. Not that great. Not that great. I didn't think this was Old Fitz, but I did think this was Blood Oath or the um, 
Midwinter's Night Dram. So I'm glad it's not the Midwinter's Night Dram because I did really enjoy the Midwinter's Night Dram. Haven't had the Blood Oath before. Not that impressed. For $109 or whatever this MSRP is at, this is kind of like Booker's. You're paying for the box. Don't buy Blood Oath. Pack 7, I don't know. I heard good things about Pack 5 and 6, but it seems like as we move up on all of these bourbons, they seem to drop quality just a little bit. That's just my opinion on things. Up next is To Do. And the to-do is Midwinter's Night Dream. That's right. This is a good bourbon, but it's finished still. And you guys know I don't love finished bourbons. Finished bourbons aren't my favorite. They're decent. I think the Midwinter's Night Dream was one of my favorite finished bourbons, but I still didn't love it myself personally. And that's where I kind of, right in the middle there, not a bad spot for that as far as a finished bourbon goes for me. Up next is the Today button. Boom. Nailed that. Hammer, boom, nail. That's the Jack Daniels. That's hot, but I will admit, and you can all go back to my other review and listen to that, I will admit that this drinks a lot better now than it did a week ago. I like this 10 times better than I did before. I don't love it, but compared to how much crap I talked on it in the video, it's a lot better. Now, am I going to go out and hunt this? Probably not. If they come out with a 2022 Koi Hill release, am I going to look for it? Probably not. But it's a lot better. The heat definitely drops off at 142.8 proof, but you still get it. I mean, it was very easy to pick out, especially of this bunch with the highest being like 112 or whatever it is that we have in here. Old Fitz, last. Can you guys believe that? Unbelievable. Up next, nail polish remover, which that wasn't the one that made the jump, but it was close. Nail polish remover is our Remus repeal. We had Remus and Old Fitz Winning the whole thing. I haven't even looked at what's left. We have Maker's Mark left and Sam Houston 15. But Remus Repeal coming in third here as what should have been one of the top two, if not number one winner in my personal book when it comes to these bottles. That's interesting. Let's just go to number one because it's like once we know number two, then we know number one. So we're going to skip number two. Number one is the television and the television was Sam Houston 15. Now, again, we took we took price out of the equation here, right? When I first reviewed Sam Houston 15, I didn't love it. I'll admit it. We took price out of the equation. We took everything out of the, the names out of the equation. We just drank the whiskey. We put them in order of what we liked the most. And this almost, this almost won easily. I didn't even have to second guess myself picking this one first. But that leaves us with a more surprising result of our birthday cake being Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark FAEO2, which a lot of people did not like this year. And I say to you, put it in a blind. Stop comparing it to FAEO1. Everybody wants to say, oh, it wasn't as good as last year. Don't worry about last year. Worry about what you've got right now. How good is this bottle right now? Especially compared to what else is being put out this year. Maker's Mark FAEO2 is the biggest surprise of this lineup for, no, second biggest surprise. Old Fitz being last is the biggest surprise. I still can't believe myself for that. That's crazy to me. Again, it just goes to show you just because it's a unicorn doesn't mean it's the best one that you can get. A lot of these were much more readily available. Maker's Mark was more readily available. Blood Oath was more readily available. Remus was more ready. Sam Houston still sitting on shelves over here in Pennsylvania. Sam Houston 15 is your Bourbon of the Week 2021 Whiskey of the Year. This is bottle 142 out of 504, PA-1. Three barrels in this batch, 15 years, six months old, barrel char for American white oak, 74% corn, 18% rye, 8% malted barley. I don't know why, there's nothing about this bottle that I shouldn't like. That's absolutely everything that I love about a whiskey. But for it to be number one over some great contenders here is absolutely surprising to me. But that's going to be our winner. And I appreciate you guys checking us out in 2021. We have big things coming for 2022. I can promise you that. So make sure you click that like. Make sure you click that subscribe. Check us out on Instagram. If you want to support the channel, see us on Patreon. That link is in the description below. And if you want to chat with us 24-7, come chat with us on Discord. Also in the description below. But that's where we're going to leave you for today. Please don't drink and drive. Drink responsibly. Have a happy new year. Stay healthy. Stay happy. Stay drinking. Cheers, y'all. Damn.